In this video, we will be discussing about the thoracic outlet syndrome. Introduction Thoracic outlet syndrome refers to a constellation of signs and symptoms that arise from compression of the neurovascular bundle by various structures in the area just above the first rib and behind the clavicle within the confined space of the thoracic outlet. Historically, several names have been coined to describe the pathology involving the thoracic outlet, including cervical rib syndrome, scalene anticus syndrome, costoclavicular syndrome, and hyperabduction syndrome. The term thoracic outlet syndrome was coined to collectively encompass the spectrum of syndromes related to the general region in the thoracic outlet. Distinct terms are used to describe the predominantly affected structure, including neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome from brachial plexus compression, venous thoracic outlet syndrome from subclavian vein compression, and arterial thoracic outlet syndrome from subclavian artery compression. Neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome accounts for more than 95% of the cases of thoracic outlet syndrome, whereas venous accounts for about 3% and arterial accounts for about 1% of all the cases of thoracic outlet syndrome. The causes include trauma, tumors, or the presence of a cervical rib. Neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome is the most common type and involves the compression of the brachial plexus leading to neck pain and numbness and tingling in the fingers. Arterial thoracic outlet syndrome involves compression of the subclavian artery and presents with pain, pallor, coldness and pulselessness in the affected arm especially during overhead activities. Venous thoracic outlet syndrome, on the other hand, results in pain, cyanosis, and swelling of the arm. Imaging techniques such as duplex sonography, x-ray, MRI, or electrodiagnostic testings are used to detect the causes of thoracic outlet syndrome. Mild symptoms should be treated with pain medication and physical therapy. Surgical resection of the causal structures might become necessary in case of progressive neurologic dysfunction or acute vascular insufficiency. Anatomy The thoracic outlet is bounded by the bony structures of the spinal column, first ribs, and sternum. Compromise of the neurovascular structures that traverse the thoracic outlet occurs in three distinct spaces, the scalene triangle, the costoclavicular space, and the pectoralis minor space. Scalene triangle. The scalene triangle is the space most commonly involved in thoracic outlet syndrome and is the most common site of brachial plexus compression. The anterior scalene muscle, which originates from the transverse processes of the 3rd through 6th cervical vertebrae and inserts on the inner borders and superior surfaces of the first rib forms the anterior boundary of the scalene triangle. The middle scalene muscle which arises from the transverse processes of the 2nd through 7th cervical vertebrae and inserts broadly onto the posterior aspects of the first rib forms the posterior wall of the scalene triangle. The superior border of the first rib forms the base of the scalene triangle. The trunks of the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery pass between the anterior and middle scalene muscles while the subclavian vein courses anteromedial to the scalene triangle. Cervical ribs and anomalous first ribs may compress the scalene triangle. Costoclavicular space. The costoclavicular space consists of the area between the first rib and the clavicle. 
the brachial plexus, subclavian artery, and subclavian vein pass through this space. Of these, the subclavian vein is most likely to be compressed at this site, pectoralis minor space. The pectoralis minor space is bounded by the pectoralis minor muscle anteriorly and the chest wall posteriorly. Although the space is not technically a part of the thoracic outlet, the brachial plexus, subclavian artery, and subclavian vein pass through the pectoralis minor space to the upper arm. Compression of the neurovascular structures within the pectoralis minor space may be nearly as common as compression within the scalene triangle. Etiology Compression of the neurovascular bundle as it traverses the thoracic outlet can result from a combination of developmental abnormalities, injuries, and physical activities that predispose to neurovascular compression. Variants in thoracic outlet anatomy, both congenital and acquired, are common and include primary variations in the bony and muscular anatomy. Compression of the subclavian vessels and the lower trunk can occur because of physical trauma due to hyperextension neck injuries, repetitive motion of the abductor and externally rotated shoulder as seen with tennis, baseball, swimming, repetitive throwing, or due to carrying of heavy objects or head. Structural abnormalities, which includes bony as well as soft tissue abnormalities, can also result in compression of the subclavian vessels and the lower trunk. These include bony abnormalities like anomalous cervical rib, collarbone fracture, exostosis of the first rib or collarbone. Soft tissue abnormalities like hypertrophic muscles in athletes, weightlifters, poor posture and obesity, hematoma, and certain tumors like Pankos tumor. All of these abnormalities can result in compression of subclavian vessels in the lower trunk.